Okay, guys, we're ready to continue. I asked Corinna to send everybody in. Uh, our next lecture is Damir again. He's talking about a, a cloud and the blockchain. Actually, this is kind of interesting. I know uh, we've been talking about blockchain in the last three or four years, even more, but I haven't seen any real adoption. Okay, so we have Bitcoin, but uh, when you look at uh, so many startups are doing bit, uh, blockchaining and stuff like this, and I haven't really seen any practical implementation. So looking forward to see what you have to say about it. Good luck. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, um, as Moshe mentioned, I am going to talk about the future of cybersecurity. And uh, let's say this is... Uh, project that our CEO Jim Rivers has been uh, personally involved in and uh, is passionate about. Uh, so when we talk about the cybersecurity in future, uh, we look at the intersection of cloud and blockchain. Um, and then we, when we mention cloud, um, I'd like to emphasize that cloud is not part of security. Cloud is much broader, it's much bigger. Security is an aspect of cloud that we are looking at. And then when we talk about blockchain, a lot of people think that blockchain is in a way an anti-cloud. So you, we have heroes and villains and that you, you know, that you distribute the nodes uh, in, in computers and then you don't need central compute, but that's far from truth. Um, and neither cloud nor blockchain are centralized or decentralized by nature. It depends how we, how we uh, go with it. So just a, a, a quick intro on like to understand uh, a bit of a structure of CSA, uh, what we try to do and how we do it. So as mentioned a couple of times, uh, we're a community-based organization. We tried to bring together all the ecosystem and uh, look to generate this common solution for the cloud and the new, new technologies that are cloud-based uh, or leveraging cloud in one or the other way. So we do lots of research. Uh, we're exploring new, uh, new initiatives, uh, looking at trends, and the very important things, uh, we really care about education, what we do uh, to um, to help the industry, to help the individuals. We have lots of trainings, webinars and events. And Moshe yesterday did an excellent uh, training on uh, cloud, uh, cloud security knowledge, um, which I believe is what we need. Just a presentation that we had uh, previously, uh, the biggest problem was, you know, the CSP's fault, but then all the problems were related to misconfigurations that cloud customers are doing. So just an example why you should come to one of Moshe's uh, trainings on cloud security. We need to increase the knowledge. Um, and that's what we are doing. So a CSA, we have around 100,000 individual volunteers all around the world in 50 plus chapters and a large number of community organizations or let's say the corporate members, over 400 of them and around 30 working groups. We are trying to address many different topics. And the fun part, our, CS, our research is free. So you can go on our website and you can find so many, so much knowledge that is waiting for you just to go and grab it. So we're 10 years old. Um, we have uh, our headquarters in US, Seattle, Bellingham. We have an EMEA headquarter and center of excellence for privacy in Berlin. And uh, we also have an Asia Pacific headquarters in Singapore. Um, so, We've seen a couple of these uh, logos around and uh, let's say the security industry is big and we at CSA are somewhere in between. We try to collaborate with everyone and share the knowledge because we believe that together we can do so much more. Um, yeah, I use a quote as well. It, it was, I was told that it's good to use some quotes. Um, so as I already mentioned, CCSK is one of fundamental uh, cloud security training that we believe that 
everyone in this space should know about and it's based on our security guidance which is uh, version 4 at this moment um, so look at it if you're not familiar with it and as mentioned re research so this is just a quick overview for everyone to understand how broad our activities are so we cover so many areas and you can see blockchain and distributed ledger working group is one of them, but there are so many others, DevSecOps, containers, microservices, like open certification framework was the one that I was talking this morning about, so, and so many others. SDP is the one that made your colleague rich, right? <laughs> Etc. So there are so many ways to work with CSA uh, to learn, to share your thought leadership, and if there's any of the areas that's missing, we are very happy to just create new one, because wherever the need of the market is, that's what we want to do. So, uh, in that sense, you know, that's how it works, you know. We, we want to collect ideas, and uh, based, uh, based on that, we want to then uh, find solutions. And just to highlight a couple of the working groups, so as mentioned, we have blockchain, Internet of Things, DevSecOps, AI working group, quantum, key, uh, key control management. These are some of the latest, the newest working groups that uh, we are uh, lately working a lot on. And I'll talk a bit now about state of cloud and where we are and why is it important. Um, and I'll come later to blockchain on top of that. So when we talk about cloud, last year was very important uh, where, you know, what happened is that 2018 was a tipping point where cloud has been bigger than traditional IT in, 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 uh, uh, well, in spending. Uh, this, the IDC did the study, so we actually spend more money on cloud infrastructures now than on traditional IT. So it took us some time, but we are now at the tipping point. And um, why is cloud winning? Well, it's simple. Like many developers, like we had a couple of very interesting presentations. They prefer to work with new technologies. They prefer to be cool, to do cool stuff. So they use cloud for it. Uh, and many de developers don't really want to develop anymore for traditional IT. So there are many, let's say, products that are available on cloud only. You cannot get it like as a, as a standalone. So um, in that sense, cloud is disrupting uh, the traditional IT, if I can say so. Uh, so, and it's getting mature, right? We are, let's say, 10 years around and we're we're trying to influence and share the best practices and uh, create them together. And we also believe that the cloud is the platform for cybersecurity. So if if we take a look at this is like let's say as an example 5G. You know, 5G is such a significant it has such an impact uh, to everything, you know, it's going to change the way we communicate, uh, it's going to fuel the further explosion of IoT, the embedded computing, and it's, it's just going to, you know, it's going to be compute everywhere. It's great, you know, that's what we all want. We want to play with cool stuff, we want to develop, we want uh, to be connected and everything great, but then, you know, um, you know, what do we do about it? You know, we need cloud to orchestrate all of this compute. That's why cloud is very important, and I believe orchestration is is the topic what which is the most important. And then when we talk about AI, I wouldn't really call it AI. I know it's like a marketing, but we're more on the machine learning and data science at this moment because the AI as such. You know, how imminent is, you know, in the market at, at this moment, you know, I'm seeing machine learning, you know, you have to train, uh, you have to train to solve like very narrow problems and hackers, they can 
get into machine learning quite easily. You know, they they can change a couple of, let's say, for fa for facial recognition, they can change a couple of pixels, and then the the AI will you know take a dog and think it's an octopus or something like that. You know, so we're still in early phases, um, and which is great. I mean, we need to learn. We need to make step by step. Um, but the the idea is we're going to need a lot of compute power for machine learning and let's say AI to develop as such. Uh, so, um, and when we work on that, uh, we will need cloud, you know, as a platform for DevOps, for DevSecOps. This has all, all been uh, discussed and DevSecOps, as mentioned before, we have a working group. Uh, it is one of the younger working groups, and we really want to get the know-how and the knowledge of people to create uh, some of the, let's say, industry guidance that we have had so far. So, and then when we, you know, when we talk about DevSecOps, we see, uh, it, like, you know, AWS has Lambda. Uh, Azure functions, you know, th these are all these are all the examples how we create, um, you know, like con continuous deployment pipelines, how we create better security. So these are all new technologies that we need to address, uh, and this is uh, something that's uh, also very exciting, as we already heard how uh, developers like that, uh, but then. Earlier in the morning, we talked a lot about continuous auditing, monitoring, you know, like forensics. Like, how do you do forensics on a serverless, right? I mean, this is something um, that, as we said, traditional security cannot be done on the cloud. And then, okay, how do we then do, you know, uh, in, in the idea where, you know, of serverless? So... This is this is you know something that's very important, and when we talk about like the like let's say the latest conferences with like the vendor conferences when the CSPs they're show they're actually showcasing how the cloud can be used uh, as an uh, used on actually on uh, on-prem infrastructure like AWS uh, uh, has a green grass for IoT just as an example and uh, so. Many things can be done, and what we believe, uh, like for the future of uh, cyber uh, cybersecurity, cloud is vital uh, with its uh, power of orchestration more than centralization, as such. Um, and then moving to another slide on uh, on the concerns, we've been talking about the concerns as such. And, uh, you know, many people have been talking about, you know, you know, what, you know, what are the main uh, risk concentration, uh, let's risk concerns, you know, you know, what are the black swan events uh, of cloud computing, you know, we're hearing about things like uh, digital Pearl Harbor, Harbor or similar um, yeah, there are many concerns, but then uh, just as an uh, example that uh, we've seen at CSA, that uh, like uh, Sally May and Rackspace, uh, they did an analysis of AWS, um, and interestingly enough, um, I myself, I'm a, I'm, a for, I'm a former CISO in a bank, and I was in insurance for a long time. So the conclusion was very like interesting, where. They decided, not decided. They they concluded that AWS, as such, it, it cannot fail in its entirety. So they they were saying that you know, going to the cloud, a big cloud provider, as such, even if it fails, it will give you enough resilience, like to to be you know, let's say to be safe enough to you know. In some instances, it would be um, in that study that, that they made. Uh, you know, it would be fine. Just go to a cloud provider, take care of the configuration and everything. But it's too big to fail um, based on their analysis, which was quite an interesting uh, read as such. So, yeah, as mentioned, there is this risk of concentration. 
you know, um, we are all like thinking, you know, will there be a black swan event that will hit the cloud? But then, you know, when we look at the incidents that happen and the real concerns that are measurable, um, they are, you know, there were scandals which are more about misbehavior of, uh, uh, of uh, you know, uh, some CSPs, there were some in inappropriate practices, you know, there were the concerns, but like, um, CSPs need to improve like everyone, but generally, um, I think it's a full perception that the CSPs are the bad guys in the room. Um, they need to improve as everyone else. We all need to improve and grow. Uh, but it's been uh, always uh, shown that most of the incidents come from misconfiguration, from the things that the cloud users are doing wrong. Um, and uh, one of the things is that uh, most likely than not, CSP is going to provide higher level of security and privacy than on-prem. Uh, and then on the on the second topic, when we talk about um, the uh, you know loss of privacy and you know what's going to happen, um, again, this is this is I think it was discussed today uh, for quite some time. Um, the CSPs uh, are not going to. Um, let's say, ad advertently look at, you know, like taking uh, away data from us. Uh, more problems are like how those environments are built. I have been discussing with certain, um, with certain members of ours from, let's say, uh, from the banking industry, from other, let's say, from enterprise users. Um, and what they were telling me, for instance, is was, you know, cloud is becoming more and more complex um, you know, how do we evaluate the complexity of the cloud? And when we discuss more into detail, you know, what's in the background, the background is how they have, uh, let's say, evolved with the usage of cloud and they didn't have like a systematic approach and then with all of the SaaS, EASPAS, everything here and there, that's why it was complex and then it's easy to make mistakes when you f do things manually, when you don't automate. Um, and a lot of times they just don't have the knowledge, they don't have the best practices to actually to do to secure cloud and to use all the benefits that the cloud can offer or let's say the cloud providers. So, and these are the things that cause the most problems. Yes, there can, there can be an incident that was caused by the CSP, but you know, the vast majority of incidents are because of us, you know, it's always easier to point finger at others, but you know, uh, it would be great if we said, yeah, this was on me. Um, so yeah, it happens. So um, an, interesting, uh, an interesting topic is like, uh, you know, like I, I like this, uh, th this cartoon about, you know, how, how we are improving on, uh, you know, understanding what's happening in the cloud um, where back on some 25, 30 years ago, you know, we, we could pretend we are anyone, but now we pretty much, uh, we can be figured out who we are in the cloud. Uh, so, um, yeah, the main message here is like, uh, you know, there's this fear or concern, like will the few powerful tech companies dictate the future of information technology? Um, yeah, that might be, let's say, a concern. We also always have concerns, but then let's look a bit into the past. Uh, some years ago, we were also concerned that Microsoft might be, you know, the only big tech company around. Uh, but then all of a sudden, a couple of, you know, small companies came up, you know, like some Amazon, some, some Googles, you know, some startups. Uh, and then fast forward to today, you know, no, it's not only Microsoft, they fell a bit behind and then they're nicely catching up. But, 
Um, I don't believe personally we should be afraid that you know that today's today's AWS, Google, Microsoft are going to dominate. They will dominate on what they're good at, but there's always going to be great innovations. There's always going to be startups uh, which are going to uh, form the future. Um, and then let's touch upon blockchain. So when we talk about blockchain, um, you know, a lot of smart people are connecting blockchain to Bitcoin, um, which Okay, I mean, Bitcoin is the, let's say, is the number one implementation of blockchain technology, but we're not advising you to, to go and buy Bitcoin. Uh, we're not talking about the crypto mining we're, and its uh, energy inefficiency. We're not talking about the, the, the cryptocurrencies, but we're talking about the blockchain in a bigger scope. Uh, so that's, that's very important because... Uh, Blockchain is so much more than cryptocurrencies and the opportunistic uh, side of it. So uh, it really uh, gives us the immutable, immutable logging infrastructure. Um, and uh, what, what we believe we are missing at this moment is some uh, more, uh, more practical use cases to see what's going on. Uh, but but we believe uh, things are going on uh, pretty nicely, and uh, at CSA we think that the um, the cloud the, the cloud and blockchain can be used together for the future uh, of the cybersecurity, and I'm going to tell you why. So uh, just okay like this. Um, we believe that we need, uh, for better cybersecurity, we need to have more integration in different areas. And uh, cloud, we have cloud, which is very efficient. It's agile IT layer, uh, which is great, a good start. Um, and then if we take a look at blockchain, not as an anti-cloud, but we look at it as uh, blockchain implemented in the containers uh, within the cloud, it has an amazing uh, resilient uh, uh, logging capabilities. So with the idea of that, you know, it's not an ad go, go run for Bitcoin, even though it increased uh, in the recent uh, weeks uh, quite a lot. I don't know if it's Facebook effect or what it is. Uh, I mean Libra, <laughs> um, but uh, it's amazing. Look, just talking about you know, whenever we say blockchain, we cannot avoid the um, the story of uh, of Bitcoin. But look at it, how resilient it has been so far. It's been around for so so long. It has it up and down, but it's it's resilience. It's because of uh, the blockchain technology in behind. Um, and then when, talk, when we talk about people or technology as such, uh, we really need to, to do this. We need to use, like, we have this massive compute in the cloud, uh, and, uh, like, every company has big ba databases. We have so much data. Uh, we need to look at the things, how to, you know, how to work together and, let's say, how to secure it. So at CSA, we're looking uh, if there's a need for blockchain to have some, uh, um, to, let's say, to, to have a use case. And our CSA labs uh, has came with a, let's say, first blockchain project, uh, which is uh, an interesting one. So just to, to, sh to share some information, back in 2017, our CEO has authored a blog on uh, blockchain as a solution for a credential in the in industry, like the, the uh, CPEs. Uh, so the idea is that, uh, you know, like me as a professional, have have we have a couple of uh, credentials and I need to collect all of those CPEs and the, the experience that I have. So let's say it parallels to a cryptocurrency uh, but uh, it's not about, it's not, a, you know, it's, it's a pseudo-crypto, it's not a, a cryptocurrency, so I cannot get rich 
through collecting my experience, hopefully someone will pay me enough because I have all of these uh, experiences and knowledge, uh, and, uh, knowledge which is uh, valuable for the organization. But the idea is that uh, the CSA Labs introduced this Sensi or Sensi here as the, the currency of life experiences, uh, which is based upon the CP standard. Uh, so the idea is that people get rewarded for real accomplishments uh, and we can measure uh, the, the security professional competency. You know, when I work on a, on a project and, you know, do some real great stuff on security, I can earn senses. You know, when I do the trainings, when I'm on the cyber week, I would get senses. And then... Um, it would be it would be based uh, on the on the CCSK and uh, this initial OpenCP blockchain uh, was populated with the people who obtained the CCSK. Uh, so it's a project that uh, we are working and uh, just uh, to provide uh, some examples. Uh, for instance, you know, a software company awards a security research uh, some senses uh, because uh, he discovered or she discovered a vulnerability in the code. So, and we have many more examples, you know, just not to go uh, through all of them one by one, but the, the idea is that people get credit for the experience efficiently and they get rewarded for the real accomplishments that they made. So we have, let's say, a measurement and we're using the blockchain, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, immutable. So just to go uh, to provide you some some more idea about it. So it's not a proof of work. It's a proof of authority type of model. Um, so we have this uh, open cybersecurity ledger. Uh, it's a, like a public-private blockchains and APIs, and they provide like the, the platform for this open CP. Uh, and other future projects. So we didn't we didn't use any of the existing blockchains. Uh, so as mentioned before, Sensi is a pseudo cryptocurrency. It provides a unit for measurement for the CPs as such. Um, and then a cyber CV uh, is a, se a secure digital wallet. It's going to be uh, it's going to be presented at uh, Black Hat uh, later this year, where you can actually. Um, install your uh, uh, cyber CV wallet on your smartphone and uh, it's providing validation uh, of your open CPs and uh, the idea that we have obviously privacy first um, no personal identifi identifiable information will be stored in the blockchain blockchain will only have the hashing with secure proofs and all the data is going to be in the cloud um, so and the next project uh, we're already thinking forward uh, is going to be uh, using blockchain, the blockchain to change the way of IT auditing is done. Um, so maybe, uh, maybe to give you more information on uh, uh, what we are going to do in the second project is we want to change how IT audit and assurance uh, uh, is done, you know, like we've been talking that you know now we need a subject matter expert like a third party audit to come in and do an, uh, like an audit and you know costs a lot so uh, what we want to do is like to plan we are still developing on this idea uh, uh, to use blockchain for the industry to help us manage the audit and insurance business and how how would we do that uh, we want to use the cloud as an IT system and we want to use blockchain as the ledger of trust. Um, so, as said, blockchain would only contain chain of hashes uh, and the information would be you know, stored securely behind in the cloud. And then on the audit side, uh, uh, the blockchain of hashes is going to verify the information and there would be information of different sensitivities as we're talking about the audits. So the ledger is going to record everything, it's going to, to manage what will be shared, what will be not. So we're still like developing the idea around it uh, and I'll be very happy to hear any comments on our, let's say, innovative uh, blockchain projects uh, 
about Sensi and about how we want to disrupt the audit industry. Um, so this is this is what we are up to in uh, CSA Labs uh, on uh, blockchain. Uh, we have a couple of upcoming events just to share with you. Our uh, our next CSA summit is going to be at ISC Square uh, Security Congress in Orlando in October and EMEA Congress in Berlin, Germany. So yeah. I'll, I left, I believe, a minute or two for some comments and questions. Um, anyone? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.